Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Windows tablet from Chewy. Now, it's been a while since I've taken a look at a Windows tablet on the channel, mainly because not a lot of people are making them nowadays. It's mostly Android or you can get a tablet with Chrome OS on it. And really, when I think about it, the only main manufacturers making tablets with Windows right now is Microsoft with the Surface line. And one of the main reasons I wanted to pick this up to take a look at it was it's actually using the new Intel Jasper Lake CPU. This is the N4500, and I haven't been able to get my hands on many devices with Jasper Lake installed because of the chip shortage. The price on this is sitting right at $299, and it also comes with a stylus and this detachable keyboard slash stand, so uh, all of this is included with it. Plus, we get a 35-watt USB Type-C wall charger, and the tablet itself supports up to 28 watts of quick charging. This tablet is known as the Chewy High 10 Go. It's powered by the new Intel Jasper Lake N4500. This is a dual core CPU up to 2.8 gigahertz. We have the new Intel UHD graphics up to 800 megahertz in this. Six gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM. This is non-user replaceable. 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Plus we can use a micro SD card up to one terabyte. A 10.1 inch IPS display at 1920 by 1200. AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a 22 watt hour battery, and it comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. So here's a quick look. I will connect this to my game capture because it's really going to be hard to film this screen, but I wanted to give you a look at this thing in action. We have 10 points of touch on this IPS display and it actually looks really good. We got that resolution of 1920 by 1200. It does work out really well. The detachable keyboard works like a detachable keyboard would. It does have that trackpad built in. I know it's a bit hard to see, but uh, if you take a close look, we have that Intel N4500. This is the new Jasper Lake line from Intel. And when it comes to the UHD graphics that are built into this little chip, it's a 16 execution unit version, up to 800 megahertz. And this should be perfectly fine for 1080p playback. It might handle 4K, I'm not counting on it, but we're also going to test out some gaming and emulation. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a cleaner look at this. Uh, this little N4500 is actually a lot snappier than I thought it would be. It's a dual core CPU. It does burst up to 2.8 gigahertz, but it's 2021 and using these dual cores can be a pain. But the N4500 has actually surprised me. It's a low power option. Web browsing on it. Everything loads up nice and quick. I am on my 5 gigahertz network. Let's go back to the, the High 10 Go. And uh, yeah, as you can see, if you wanted to use this for web browsing, email checking, you shouldn't have any issues as long as you're connected to a decent network. And the resolution I'm recording in right now is 1080p with 125% scale. Let's check out some YouTube video playback and we'll go with 1080p at first and then we'll see if this can handle any 4K. Because if we go out of USB Type-C to HDMI, we could connect this to a 4K display. Make sure we're at 1080p. And I'll bring up Stats for Nerds. And we'll go ahead and play here. So get a couple drop frames on the initial load in. But not bad at all. This is something I would never notice. And uh, yeah, we are at 1080p, so I don't think we're going to do very well at 4K with this, but it was never designed to do 4K. Not bad at all. So, I mean, if you wanted to do some video playback on this, be it natively from a micro SD card, stream from YouTube, Netflix, HBO Go at 1080p, this little tablet will handle it just fine. So this setup is definitely not designed for gaming, but uh, you know, I'm definitely going to test out some gaming here. We're going to go with some older stuff because I kind of got a feeling on how this is going to perform. So first up, we're going to start off really light here with Minecraft. This is the Windows Store version. And yeah, I mean, we're at 60 FPS with this. I did have to go into the settings and turn the chunks down to 16, but we still have fancy graphics on. But in the end, this isn't a super hard game to run. This is very well optimized. It's been out for years. And I've been able to run this pretty decently on lower end chipsets. So let's go ahead and move up just a bit. Next on the list, we have Half-Life 2, low settings. And I'm actually getting an average of 106 FPS. I understand that this is an old game, but we're working with a low powered chip, a dual core chip in 2021. This is not going to run something like Cyberpunk 2077. I also wanted to see how well it would handle CSGO, and going into this I knew we weren't going to have a great time. We're 720p, low settings, and I got an average of 21 FPS out of it. Ah. 
The final game I wanted to test is one of my favorites of all time. This is Skyrim, the original version. Low, 720p. I averaged 32 FPS with this. It's not ideal, but I mean, you could get by playing this at 30 FPS on this little tablet. So now I want to move over to a little bit of emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I am upscaled to 1280 by 960 Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The FPS is up in the top left hand corner, and I had a great feeling that this would handle Dreamcast really well, especially using the ReDream emulator. Next on the list, we have some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 1x resolution, DirectX 11 back in, and it's really, really trying its hardest, but we do have some dips. This is kind of the way it goes with this game here, especially on low-end chips. But when it comes to easier to emulate stuff, this should be just fine at 2x and 3x resolution. There's a select few games that are just harder to emulate, like this one, Chains of Olympus, Midnight Club, Dub Edition, and Killzone. Those are just the harder ones to run, but as you can see with Chains of Olympus, it is really trying here, and it's staying more at 60 than it is dipping down. And the final thing I wanted to test on this unit was GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. This is Soul Calibur 2, it is an easier one to run, and this little chip is handling it just fine. We're at native resolution, DirectX 11, but this doesn't mean that it's going to run every GameCube game at full speed. Because when I move over to something a little harder to emulate, like Automotorista, you can see it kind of fall on its face here. So when it comes to the new Chewy High 10 Go, I kind of wish they would have opted for a higher end Jasper Lake CPU like the N5100. It's basically the same chip, but it has two extra cores and that would have definitely helped out. But seeing that this is only running at 8 watts right now and everything we just tested here was at 8 watts, the N4500 did perform much better than I thought it would and we will start to see this chip more often in lower end Chromebooks and cheaper laptops coming down the road, but it comes down to the supply chain. And with everything that's going on right now, it's been hard for them to come out with these Jasper Lake CPUs. This was basically the only thing that I could find with the Jasper Lake that was readily available right now. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little tablet, I will leave a few links in the description. I did check out the BIOS in this thing, and there is a way to up the TDP from 8 watts. I could actually go all the way up to 15, but this is not actively cooled. This is a totally silent solution, and even at 8 watts right now, I mean, it's getting on up there. It's not thermal throttling or anything like that, but at 15, I guarantee you it would. I could do a video down the road showing you the difference between 8 watts and 15, and it would make a big difference, but uh, it's really up to you, so let me know if you want to see that in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always... Thanks for watching.